Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of background that you'll need to do the lab on this Monday, which is going to involve magnetic fields. First of all, what is a magnetic field? We just barely started talking about electric fields, which are caused by a charge. So if you have a charge here, a positive charge, let's say, I gave you an expression for the electric field. Uh, KQ over R squared is the strength of the electric field. Okay. Now a magnetic field, instead of having just a single charge at a certain location, with a magnetic field, which you're going to do, and I'm going to move to another slide, For a magnetic field, what you're going to have is, um, if you have moving charge, current passing through a wire, um, we're going to talk about this in class, but you actually get a magnetic field that wraps around the wire. Now, what is a magnetic field? You know what an electric field is, because it's something that's going to cause a positive charge to uh, experience a force in a given direction. Magnetic field is different. It's, it is what is produced by a magnet. And what you're going to find out is that a magnetic field is um, just like an electric field. There's these field lines that um, we'll talk more about, but they emanate from a given positive charge. Magnetic field has lines that wrap around a wire. Now, you can't see these lines, but what would happen is if you have a wire here with a current passing through it, and you put a compass somewhere around here, the compass is going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. And the way it works is that if you have a wire here, um, the magnetic field is going to be wrapping around the wire in a direction that is, um, if you put your thumb in the direction of the current and wrap your fingers around the wire, the magnetic field is going to point in the direction of your fingers. So it's hard to do it on this. It's hard for, even, for me to even draw it. But if you were to do it and the, and the current was pointed this way and you put your thumb of your right hand in that direction, and you wrap your fingers around the wire, you would see that on this side of the wire, the magnetic field would be coming towards you. And on this side of the wire, the magnetic field would be going away from you. And it would be wrapping around the wire in that fashion. So you'd actually have, anywhere in space, you'd have a ring around the wire with it coming out where it's red here, and, where, and you'd have it coming in where it's blue here um, at any point along the wire. Okay, so that's what happens when you have a single wire. What you're going to see in lab today, or on Monday, is this situation. You're going to have a coil of wire. Actually, you're going to have a slinky. And what you have with a slinky is you're going to have the magnetic field um, passing through the slinky just like this. So it's actually going to be something called a uniform magnetic field inside the slinky. By the way, the symbol for magnetic field is B. And it's a vector also. It has a direction. It has a magnitude. Now, what you're going to need to know is, uh, this, this kind of makes sense. The bigger the current passing through the wire, the stronger the magnetic field. Kind of makes sense, right? There's more charge flowing, so the motion of charge is what creates this thing called a magnetic field, for reasons we'll talk about later. But the more charge you have passing through the wire, the stronger the magnetic field. Um, and so really the magnetic field is just a function of how much current is passing through the wire. Now if you take every little piece of wire here and you were to put your, your and let's say the current was moving in this direction through the wire, all right, so it's just looping through this wire. This is supposed to be like a slinky, by the way, or a spring. It's hard to draw that also in, um, on, a board, on a white screen like this, but if you can imagine the current passing through the wire um, the coil like this, and if you can imagine putting your fingers around the coil at any point, the red part of the coil would be here, the blue part of the coil would be he um, sorry, be here. At any point along the wire, that would be the case. And if if I could actually draw this wire correctly, what you'd actually find is that in the middle here, where I drew these these blue lines here. <laughs> now I'm drawing red lines here, um, you actually get the magnetic field reinforcing so that it always passes through the coil in this direction. So um, if you could somehow measure that magnetic field, which is what you're going to do in lab, you could determine the relationship between the size of the current and the strength of the magnetic field. 
and I'll give you what that relationship is supposed to be, and you're going to actually measure it in, in um, lab. That relationship is that the magnetic field is equal to the, um, the size of the current, that's easy, times the number of coils per unit, per unit meter. If it makes sense to you, it kind of may make sense to you, the more coils you have in a given area, the more current you're going to have passing through. So the tighter, the more tightly the, the coils are wound, the stronger the magnetic field. And this is often called little n, number of coils per unit meter. Multiply that times another quantity, which is a, a constant. It's called mu zero. The value of mu zero is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. And the units of, of this magnetic field strength are going to be uh, something called a Tesla per amp be Tesla meters per amp. Okay, That'll cancel out and in the end you're going to be measuring your magnetic field in units of Teslas. Some of you might know what a Tesla is. He was a famous inventor in the early 1900s, late 1800s, Nikola Tesla. The magnetic field is named after him. Okay, so this is the equation you're going to use, and I'm going to move on to here. So what you're going to be doing in lab today is you're going to be measuring the magnetic field, and um, Dr. Kodka will show you how to do that, but you'll, you, we actually have a magnetic field sensor that ties into the um, vernier system. The magnetic field is going to be equal to mu zero times little n times i. You're going to be able to adjust the current passing through the slinky, you're going to use um, the, the power supplies you've used in previous classes. You're going to control this little n by either tightening or lengthening your slinky. The tighter it is, the bigger n is. This is the number of coils you count over a one meter distance. And you're actually going to be trying to measure this constant, which we're going to call, which, which is called the permeability of free space. It's kind of like the K term in the um, Coulomb's Law expression. This is kind of like that. It's just a constant, but it has the units that I gave on the previous slide. You're going to be finding this by varying um, the current for a given N and measuring the magnetic field with a magnetic field sensor. You're going to vary the size of the current anywhere from 0.1 and some of you will be able to take it all the way up to one amp. Some of you might only be able to get to half an amp, depending on your power supply. If you can get to one amp, do it. Then you'll adjust your N. You'll adjust your spacing and you'll repeat. Then you'll do it once more and you'll repeat. So you'll have three sets of possibly up to ten current measurements and ten magnetic field measurements. And then the lab tells you how you can actually calculate mu zero, but um, you'll be plotting B versus uh, I, or you'll be plotting your magnetic field strength versus your current, and you should get a line, and the slope of that line will be related to mu zero. Okay, good luck with that.